was there a certain level of anger towards Armento for having a gun and essentially putting you into this whole situation where a cop cops get you know a cop got killed or was it more like you know something it was my I fault. put myself I I okay. brought him to that house you know what I mean listen did he did he make a good decision having a gun no you know what I mean if he would have told me I would never the car would have never moved I was saying no no you got to get that out of because that just wasn't my thing there's and that's and it's another thing the DA cannot produce one person on the planet earth on the planet earth they could say, yeah, I hung out with Lilo all the time. We always had guns, and he knew that, and that's what he was. Not one person, okay? Not one, okay? Yeah. But, uh, no, I didn't never really got, man, I mean, listen, it was my drug addiction that took me to that place with a guy like him that was carrying a gun. I bought him to that, to that house. So, if anything, sometimes I think maybe he should have been mad at me. Yeah. Because, you know, he hadn't been in trouble in all those years, and, like, now I put him in a situation where he's getting shot and the whole thing's going on. Now he's, you know, he shoots somebody. And, you know, so, no, not at all. There was no anger there. Well, at one point, uh, Chaz uh, Palminteri, who you co-starred with in Bronx Tale, I guess was asked about you. And he said that he, he wants nothing to do with you, that you had all these opportunities and you blew it. Yeah, that's what he said. Do you understand why he said that, or do you think it's a little unfair? I think it's a little bit of both. I definitely understand where he's coming from, because there's you know people out there that would you know they, their whole lives pursue an acting career and don't even come close to having an opportunity or getting an opportunity like that. I can understand that from 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 that aspect. But then again, you know, he has to take into consideration that I have, you know, parents. And, you know, he's a parent and he has kids. And I think from that aspect and from that standpoint, he maybe should have kind of, you know, and he knew my mother and father. He knew they were decent people. And, you know, this kind of made them like, you know, my mom and dad, you know, especially my dad was like, you know, this guy's somebody that you worked with. This is a colleague, a peer. And, you know, he shouldn't be saying these things. And it, it, it made me more upset that my father was upset. But I did understand, like, like, listen, man, I blew it. I had, the, you know, the opportunity of a lifetime, and I wanted to do this shit, and this was what happened. So I can't really blame this guy for saying what he said. But because yeah. he made my father, like, a little upset that he would say that, and people would, like, you know, hear that, and my father's got to hear from people that, he, oh, did you know that Chad said about this? It's just like, you know, I mean, yeah. it's it was kind of, you know, it's kind of in the middle with that. Can't say either way, but I understand what he's saying. So. Well, and I guess 2017, you ran into Robert De Niro again uh, on the set of The Irishman. That's correct. Yes. And how's that talk like? Um, I mean, Bobby's you know he's a great guy. You know, like seeing him again after all those years was like meeting him for the first time. Um, but he did ask me, and I remember the sincerity and how genuine he was and the concern when he asked me, "Are you okay?" I said, you okay? And it was like a father asking a son, are you okay? You know, like, you know, he said, I, I know you spoke to my daughter. I remember you spoke to Jazz and this, that, and the other thing. Then he said, are you okay? You know, which meant a lot to me. And, you know, this is when he, you know, the character that he's playing in The Irishman, Frank Sheeran was a real big guy, you know, like six foot four. So De Niro had the, the platforms on. So he's like real tall. He's got the green contacts. So I'm having this conversation with this guy who's like, that I've known, but I don't know because he's like this other character in appearance wise, you know? But it was uh, it was a very, you know, it was it was brief. It wasn't like we sat there and spoke for you know, an hour and a half. We spoke there, we spoke for maybe two minutes. But right. it was- Because you weren't, you weren't actually in that film, right? No, I was not. Okay. Okay. Now you come out and once you get out of prison, you are still living in New York, right? So here you are living in New York. And even though you were, you you know, you got off from the murder conviction, NYPD still looks looks at you like a cop killer. Of course they do. And, and not only them, many other people do as well. Right. And I guess cops would like see you on the street and like what, spit on the ground. And yeah, that's happened like that. a few times. 
And I remember one of the cops that did that, it was in Yonkers, cause there was a cop, I think he became paralyzed. So other cops used to come visit him. And he lived in the building where I was living with my ex-girlfriend in downtown Yonkers by the train. And then I remember <clears throat> seeing him down the street at the store. And I said to him basically like, you know, like, you know, what's your problem, man? I wish you would get to know me as a person and not by what you read in the papers. And, you know, we got to talking and turned out to be a, he turned out to be a pretty good guy. And if I saw him now, he'd shake my, hey, Lilo, how are you? And so. Right. Well, once you got out, you started getting some roles again. Yeah. I guess you were in uh, back in the day with Alec Baldwin and uh, Danny Glover. Correct. And I guess the NYPD uh, called for a boycott of that film. They did. Did that accomplish anything or no? Well, I think what it accomplished was it, it got us way more pressed than we ever thought we were going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the front cover of the New York Post as a result of it. So, And I had a cameo in that film. It wasn't even... You know, I was yeah. in one scene. Right. And, I mean, I'm looking at the filmography. You've gotten a few roles since then, uh, but not like how it was before. No, no. <clears throat> it's like the work that I didn't do back then to get to where I was, I'm doing now. It's like the yeah. reverse. But I don't care. I embrace it, and I love what I do. And, you know, if God, you know, if that's part of my plan, if God's plan for me then it, it'll happen. It'll happen again in a big way. And if not, I'm okay with that too. Well, it's quite a journey. It's quite a journey that, that you've gone through. And I think the most important thing that I keep hearing is that you take responsibility for what happened. Oh, absolutely, you know, I do. You're not speaking to me like a victim. No, not you're at not all. Point, you're not pointing the finger. Listen, if we weren't there your... that night, if I wasn't on drugs and I didn't bring that guy to that house, that cop would still be alive. It was my addiction that brought me to that particular place that night. And, uh, you know, take full responsibility for how my actions, my drug addiction, made a contribution in the death of that heroic police officer. And believe me, man, you know, people, like, they make me out to be, like, some remorseless, you know, like, like serial killer, like, the way they... But listen, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about that night. You know what I mean? There's not, yeah, I mean, at least one second of every single day I think about that night. And I wish, like, damn, man, I wish I could go back and change what happened that night. I really do. But we can't do that in life. That's not the way it works. Hopefully you learn from the mistakes that you made in the past and, and you make better decisions in the future. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this is one of the things that we really try to push here. You know, Vlad TV is, you know, you know not to glamorize people's crimes and you did what you did and you did your time you paid your debt to society you five years on parole either no violations yeah never been in trouble you know, once which definitely stands for something and should absolutely. anyway absolutely absolutely you, you kicked drugs you never got back on you you did your time you didn't go to a, a you know use some sort of loophole and, and skirt your responsibility. Um, you know, and it looks like you're rebuilding your career again and you have a level of humbleness based on the whole situation. And and one thing and, that I do take, you know, a lot of pride and it's very special to me, I've used the experience <clears throat> to help other addicts. I mean, I talk to people every single day that reach out to me on social media. And then some people, you know, their moms will message and say, Lilo, thank you so much. You know, you really helped my son. He's sober. Or the, you know, you'll get moms that say, my son just died. You remember my son? I mean, I was doing that already. Someone took notice. Um, and I, I, I'm with this health company. I'm with a health company called Amadus Health. We're a national company. We have, you know, s facilities throughout the country, detoxes. And my title is I'm a national outreach coordinator. I basically try to show people a better way. Than, than, than addiction and, you know, yeah. and I'm living proof and this is why I work out so hard and try to look a certain way physically because it's not so much what you tell people but it's what you show them that we do recover and it's possible and uh, you know that's very important to me that to me is much more of an accomplishment than any movie or rather every other you know TV shows or whatever but 
it works hand in hand because the more successful I become as an actor, uh, you know, the more successful I will become in that because it's further proof that not only did I recover, but I recovered in a big way and it's possible. People look at you and like, wow, this guy's back doing movies. Like this guy was smoking crack and snorting heroin like me. And this guy went and, and is doing this now. So it's possible. And you show people a different way and, and they, they, they see through you that it's a possibility and they want that. And, and, and that gives them the motivation to want to get better. And that's what it's all about, man. That's what it's, you know, the day that I was born, that's why I was born. That's why God, and that's why you know, I almost died overdoses, you know, three times, jumping out of cars, gunshots. You know, I should have been dead like eight times already. But God's plan for me was to do all those movies and have that certain level of influence to be where I am today. And that's to help others in a similar situation that I was in. So. Yep. Well. Lilo Brancato Jr., man, I appreciate you sharing your story. I think that it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, drug addiction is something that will always be around. Absolutely. It's worse uh, now than it's ever been. Yeah. You know, I mean, back then, you know, when we were younger, it was crack. These days, it's the opioid addictions that, that are happening, the overdoses, the, the fentanyl. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. It's all because of the fentanyl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so that's something that's never going to go away. But I think... Overcoming drug addiction. Uh, I think that's an important message. And you are an example of someone that could actually do it. And that right there is, like you know, like you said yourself, a huge accomplishment. So My greatest accomplishment I, yet. Yeah. Appreciate you coming in, telling your story. And you know, you, best brother. of luck to, to your career and everything that you do in the future. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Thank you for having no, me. Appreciate it. No doubt. Appreciate you coming in. Peace. Take care.